probably just pray to thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in this, your Bible study, Father, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, all right. Now, one thing that's always on my heart to do that God has placed is to do a pre-message charge so we're all clear on what God is trying to do. Amen? Amen. So we're going to start first with the uh, scripture, James 1, 22 to 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. When he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. We're talking about man, we're talking about mankind. Amen? Amen. So he knows you're included. Amen? All right, all right. Um, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues <coughs> in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one, everybody say this one. This one. This one will be blessed in what he does. So here's the pre-message charge. Make sure that you take time and you commit to yourself that you will take away at least one, probably more than one, let me keep that in news, but at least one nugget. You're going to start to do them this week. Again, I love all of you. I so appreciate the fact that y'all came, but you don't want to waste your time. Amen. You all could have been doing 10 million other things this, today. Amen? So you want to receive and take this out and apply it. Amen? So starting this week. Amen? Everybody say amen. 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 All right, let's go. Let's rock. All right, best title for the day. How to consistently obey God. How do we do that? Because we, as believers, it's important that we have our relationship with God. And once we do, we have to understand that we, we want to obey the God who gave his son for us. Amen? Amen? So how do we do that? How do we do that on a consistent basis? Let's look at our foundation scripture, Romans 7.15. I typically go to the New King James Version, but it's going to make sense. This is Paul speaking now. Paul speaking to the church in Rome. All right, now he says, For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. What Paul was saying was, the things that I want to do, the things I want to do to obey God, I find myself not doing it. But the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing that. This is Paul. Right? So he's giving a background there. He's, he's being transparent during a set of scriptures. Amen. So we got to look at how do we do it then? How do we get consistent? <coughs> uh, companion scripture, Luke 6 and 46. <coughs> this is one of those that's smashing the face. But that's what we want as believers, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to cushion these scriptures, but we want those that are going to smack us like, whoa, okay, wake up call. Yeah. For why do you call me Lord, Lord? Mm. This is Jesus talking. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? All right, we're going to get into it. That's the slide. We, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. All right, now, so God's objective for this lesson is this. simply twofold. Uh, to get you to a place where you choose to obey him in the moment. What does that mean? You know, in that moment where you have an opportunity of both disobedience and the other way, mm -hmm. what do you choose to do? where it seems to be comfortable. Because in that moment, it's going to feel easy and comfortable to not do the right thing. Because mm -hmm. that's it's trying to get at our carnal nature, our old nature. Mm -hmm. So that's the easy thing. So to get, choose, to, choose to obey him in that moment. What moment are we talking about? That, that 303 in the work day when your coworker just messaged you. <laughs> that, seven, that 707 when your spouse just got on the last marriage. <laughs> What are you going to do? Amen? So again, when it seems to become the second objective, is again, to have a lifestyle consistently obeying him. Now, this is a revelation piece. Now, Paul's talking to the church in Corinthians, or the church in Corinth, rather, and they had a number of things going on that he had to go and correct. But one in particular, let's talk about this. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. For do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Now, 
he was dealing with a number of things, but in particular, the background context here is he was helping them with regards to, they were getting into areas of sexual immorality. But as we learned before in, in previous sessions, a principle that can be extracted out, that's universal, both in the background context and in our lives today, is the fact that our body is not our own. For those of us that have children to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our body is no longer our own. Mm -hmm. Yes, God's given us free will. We can technically do whatever we want to do. Amen? Amen. But our desire is, now that he's given us his son, and we choose to be called his own, technically our body is not our own. We can't just do what we want to do and say we're Christian. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We got to stay on that football field, mm -hmm. right? And do what the coach is telling us to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now, so why should we obey? Well, there's two of us. Many reasons we should obey, but this just goes down to just two of them. Number one is Jesus' standard. Everybody get this. It's Jesus' standard to show that we really love him. Now, we're not talking about from a legal obligation perspective. Like back in the day with, with regards to the Old Testament when they had like 600, like 94 laws. You had the law and you had like, like 694 commandments or aspects of that law. But it was hard for them to do that. That's why we're under grace now because they just couldn't fulfill all of it. So we're not talking about obeying from an obligation, legal, yoke around your neck perspective. But it should be from the perspective of a heart to want to be like Jesus. He's saying, if you want to be like me, let me show you the road map. And just do what I'm telling you to do. Does that make sense? So from that perspective, again, it's Jesus' standard to show that we really love him. And you got to ask yourself, <coughs> as believers, do you love Jesus? Because his standard is, again, do the things I ask you to do if you want to be like me. Because... This is his standard to say, if you say you love me, then keep my commandments. That's his, that's his criteria. So we may go around saying that we love Jesus, and that's cool. We got to watch that we're not just doing it both in thought and in sincere words, but those words may be empty. If our actions aren't following up with that. Amen? Amen. Again, do you love him? Is that scripture smacks in the face? We call him our Lord. If we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we say he's Lord. But well, please know, and we gotta pray, there may be those that at the time of salvation received him as Savior, but not necessarily as Lord. We gotta make sure we don't fall into that. Because yes, everything comes with salvation. So praise God for it. Mm -hmm. But the package comes with him being our Lord. Lord says, I give you the right to tell me what to do. Because mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm like you. Mm -hmm. So we can't say, Lord, Lord, and then not do the things which he tells us to do. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, this is not about condemnation. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. It's not about making us feel bad, but it is to get up in our crawl and say, I can do better. Amen? All of us. Yeah. From the pulpit, to the back door, to the side windows. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Number two, so another reason why we should obey. We got, got many, but here's two. There's some blessings with obedience. Yeah. Your, your, life will, your life will incrementally change for the better. There's some blessings that come with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, proof text. Just as many of them, but it's proof text. They obey and serve him, they will spend their days, you know, that 24 thing, that 24 hour thing, their days in prosperity. Pros let's be clear. Prosperity means doing well in every area of your life mm -hmm. your spirit, your soul, your body, your finances, your marriage, your job. Does that make sense? Amen. Every area of life, all right? Mm -hmm. It's not just money, but it does include money. But every area of your life, he wants to see you do well mm -hmm. in every area because you're representing him. Days of prosperity and your years, you know, that 365 day thing, right? Yeah. How many leap years? Uh, 
Okay, so, so there you go, 29 from February, perfect, there you go, 28. I'll put it on the spot. All right, and their year is in pleasures, okay? Now, here's some, just a couple of examples of, again, your life changing for the better, just out of obedience, just some basic things. Again, helps in the prayer process. These are things that as you obey, these are things, you know, these benefits of your life get better. Helps in the prayer process. Again, aids in you talking to people about Jesus. When you're at the royal farm <coughs> and the Holy Spirit tells you to go say something to the other person on the other pump, that's good. You're choosing to obey because you could also say, no, do a flesh override. Like, no, I'm good. I, I got to go to work. I got to do that. You know what I mean? So, it, so obedience helps. It aids in there, right? Okay. Um, triggers, you know, again, practical stuff. Triggers bills getting paid. It, these are various areas that you're obeying the word. These are just minor benefits here. Because bills getting paid, right? Releases you to get that new skirt, that those new tools. <laughs> Amen? Okay, that's all we, we're keeping it real, right? Okay, all right. That's exactly right. All right. Now here, sparks an inward humble satisfaction of being used by the Holy Spirit for spiritual and natural needs of other people. The inward satisfaction that all of you feel when God is using you to sow into somebody else, to be a blessing, to buy them groceries, to say something nice, to give them a compliment that day when, they, when you see their head feeling down, when you get a discernment from the Holy Spirit. That's the inward satisfaction that you get from the Holy Spirit. Like, it wasn't about me, God. You were just using me to help somebody else in whatever way that God has. There's an inward satisfaction for that. But that comes with obedience. Because the Holy Spirit is telling us to do that. It's not us on our own. Amen? Amen. Again, for both those vacations and other godly family yeah. desires, right? Say about like vacation. Again, these are all just minor things, but we're just picking out some examples, you know? All right, now. So that being the case, so how do we do it? How do we consistently obey God? Because we want to look back and say that we were consistent in doing it. Are people going to fall short? All of us. All have fallen short. All have fallen short. You got what I mean? So it's possible. That's what 1 John 1 and 9 is. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. That's for the believer. That's not for the unbeliever. That's for the person that has received Jesus as Lord and Savior. So God knows, unfortunately, because of this world system, because of what Adam did, we're going to mess up. But what we want to do, we don't want to claim that, but we, got, we want to make sure that we are trying our best to be consistently in obeying him. Amen? Amen. So here's a quick checklist. How do we do it? So, one piece is, Acceptance from God, not man, and some of man, some of mankind, not you, is primary. In that moment, when you reach that crossroad, you got to choose to do what God is telling you to do. Not what other people are saying, not the pressures from family and Cousin Pookie and them, and neither if you decide to get into your flesh, not what your flesh wants to do. Acceptance from God is primary. Look at proof text, you can reference uh, Galatians 1, 9 through 12. And another one, you can look at this, look at our example. Um, Matthew 26 and 39. He, talking about Jesus, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus had a moment. Oh, before we get to the devil less, Jesus had a moment. Yeah. He's both the son of God and the son of man. You got know I me? Mean? Yep. He slept. He showed us what to do in his physical nature, in his earth. Amen? He had a moment. Then, like y'all said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So he had that crossroad moment. So he chose to say, you know what? Not what I might want to do, but Father, what your will is. Yeah. I'm choosing to accept acceptance from you is primary. Not what I want in that temporary moment. And not what other people want. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our example, right? Yep. Yes. Another checklist item. Immediately replace disobedient thoughts with the word. Oh. So when thoughts come, because that's how the enemy comes with those fiery darts, with the thoughts. Mm -hmm. When those thoughts come for you to do whatever, you got to replace that with the word. Yes. Example. So when something comes, if you don't know the word, let's say in a particular area, you go 
when you look in the back of your Bible, a lot of study Bibles will have the concordance. Look, read, you look up that word, reference it. You get a couple of scriptures in your heart. How do you get it in your heart? Two steps. One, believe. And number two, repetition. You keep repeating it. That's how the word gets in your heart. So when that thought comes two minutes later or that next day, you now repeat that word. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. It's a guarantee. So as you're doing that, you're also doing Philippians 4 and 8. You also think about blessed things. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things have a good report, meditate on those things. So now you're doing a one-two punch. Your left hand is throwing that one word up, and your right hand is doing the word by thinking about another scripture. It's a done deal. You got me? Again, it, but it has to be immediate. Because if you don't do it <coughs> soon, that evil thought gets a chance to try to get into your heart. So you got to cast it out quick. Amen? Amen. You can reference uh, the scriptures there. You can reference 2 Corinthians 10, 5 through 6, Romans 12, 1 through 2, and Philippians 4 and 8. Another checklist item. Make the choice to suffer short-term discomfort to, to our flesh, to the old carnal nature, um, for long-term blessings. You can reference those scriptures. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him. So my Jesus, who is the joy? We are. He saw us. He saw people beginning saved. Glory to God. He saw Kendry loving, praising God. He saw all that. You got me? For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So he saw beyond the moment, endured the cross because he could see beyond it. So make the, he chose to suffer short-term discomfort for long-term blessings. Again, he's our example. So we got to make the choice to do that. You reference Hebrews 12 and 2 and Hebrews 12 and 11. Next, take bold steps of obedience without full understanding. You may not know why God is telling you to go down Route 13 instead of Route 1. <laughs> you go down Route 1 every day. Everybody say error. Every day. Every day. But God said, hey, no, go this other way. And you don't understand why, because no man works for you. But see, what you don't know is there's a delay. There's a traffic jam down here. You don't know why he may have told you to tell that bank teller, hey, your, your shoes are nice. You don't know how she has been whipped mentally. Yeah. By people telling her that she's insecure and she's not what God has for her. So you just simply saying, hey, those shoes are nice. Without full understanding. Amen? Amen. Reference Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. You can reference 2 Kings 5, uh, 1 through 14. <laughs> and that, we talked about that one before. Again, that's, that 2 Kings was, was interesting because that was Naaman. And so, uh, long story short, we talked about before he had the leprosy. And so, a girl came and told you know, his king and said, hey, hey, I know how we can get this resolved. Um, he said, you know, the man of God down, down, you know, over children of Israel. So he, they said, all right, well, okay, cool, 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 sounds good. His king was cool and sent him the letter to the other king. King Israel was like, all right, all right, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Man of God, Elijah said, all right, cool, let's, let's be working through. He comes to him, he comes to the man of God, name it. Maybe God doesn't even come out. He said, just go, go dip in the water seven times. He's like, whoa, 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 I, I'm the man. You know, I'm the captain of his army. I, you, you know, I, I, I slay lions and all kinds of stuff. I'm bad. He's like, well, what? But you tell me to go dip in the water, I could have dipped in some other kind of water that was clean. His servant, his servant said, man of God. He said, he, no, he's a man of God. He said, look, if you, if he would have told you to do all these other things, you would have done them. So why not just go do this easy thing, go dip in seven times? So he chose to obey without full understanding. He dipped seven times, left the people going. Amen? Amen. Again, you gotta, without full understanding, you got to just obey. Mm -hmm. Don't make plans to sin. Mm -hmm. That probably doesn't need too much elaboration. That's a man of God. Mm -hmm. Don't make plans to sin. All right? You can reference Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, Philippians 4 and 8. Again, we got to do those thoughts because the enemy's going to try to get us to sin. Mm -hmm. So we got to cast out those thoughts immediately before our thoughts become our actions. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? We stand under pressure. Look, there's going to be pressure to our flesh because we are disciplining it. Mm -hmm. So we got to say, no, I'm going to withstand. Me and DK, we, we like sweets. We still like sweets, right? Okay, all right, there. So let's say we get to <laughs> better make sure. So let's say, let's say we focus. God has his own a meal plan or whatever. There's pressure when that slice of cake 
And the slice of cake may be okay, but it's this pressure when that second piece is coming. Me and DK got to be like, mm. does that make sense? He's going to try to go against what the word of God is saying. So again, there's going to be pressure, but you can withstand it. Amen? Withstand the pressure. You look, reference Ephesians 6 and 13, James 4 and 7, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Jesus did it. And Jesus was in the wilderness. And the devil tempted him. Those were his thoughts. All he did was did the word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Envision the consequences. So before you... You're at that crossroad, and you have that choice of doing what God says, and it doesn't feel the warm and fuzzy in the moment, mm -hmm. and that choice that seems comfortable. Before you do it, let the Holy Spirit walk you down those steps and say, what will be the consequences if I do this? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, got it. I'm good. I ain't going to do that route. Mm -hmm. So envision the consequences. And in reference, keep in reference, Jeremiah 5 and 25 and Galatians 6 and 8. <coughs> And on the opposite, envision the blessings. Okay, God, all right, let me, let me think about this. If I go down this route, if I go down this road, God, Holy Spirit will reveal to you some of those blessings that come. We have to understand this. The enemy is going to present things that make us feel good in the beginning, but won't show us the bad in the end. God does the opposite. He says in the beginning, this may be tough with your flesh, but you can do this, and then there's blessings in the end afterwards. Amen. Isaiah 119, Job 36 and 11. Obedience is not circumstantial. It's not you do it today and don't do it tomorrow. It's, it's not convenient. Just being transparent. So I get up in the morning time. I get up like around 3, 3.30 during the week. Bounce like around 4.30. And one of the things I do is, and I have to count on the bus to go to DC to work, right? So one of the things I've set to do is to do some of my Bible time during that time. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning time. <laughs> it's so easy to want to just go to sleep. And, I, and transparent, I have done it. Just being real. But it's not circumstantial. If God told me that's one time I'm supposed to spend with him on that portion, that's not contingent on it being 5.35 in the morning time. Mm -hmm. It's not circumstantial. 1 John 2, 5, uh, 3 or 5, and 2 Kings 5, 1 through 14. Finally, start where you are. Do the word that you know. If you don't know the whole Bible as you continue to grow, okay. If, but if you only know one scripture, do that. Do the word that you know. Start where you are. You reference there in Luke with Peter, and y'all think y'all know the story, but again, so Jesus was ministering. Uh, he got to the point where he said, all right, I'm gonna, a lot of big crowd. I see these two boats over here. The fishermen went over there, kind of clean out the nets. He said, all right, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get on this boat. He asked Peter to push out from it. All right, cool. After a while, he, said, he told Peter, launch out into the deep. Peter says, I toil all night. Like, I do this. Like, this is my gig. And you're telling me to do opposite? We don't do this during the day. We do this at night. I'm, this, is my, this is my profession. Although we did toil all day and caught nothing, this is my profession. Right? <laughs> he said, but nevertheless, that's your word. Yeah. I will. Mm -hmm. I think y'all know the story. He did that. He chose to obey. Caught a bunch of fish. Tried to call his boys over. They both start sinking as well. The point is, he just learned that word. Mm. Remember, he taught all night and caught nothing. That was his thing. Jesus just spoke that. Mm -hmm. He chose to obey the word that he had just learned. Mm -hmm. So obey what you know. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Just like all of you are going to do. You're going to take that word out. Amen? And start applying this week. Mm -hmm. Y'all do that. Go ahead and get your fish. Amen? Yes, sir. Yeah, give God glory. <laughs>